welcome to my garden. Today I picked a few things out of the garden. I picked some mustard greens and some fresh lettuce and some garlic chives and some anise hyssop. And I was thinking I'll come up with a little dish, so I took a drive out to the farm. And I also picked up some hot Italian sausage and some sweet potatoes. Now, I still have sweet potatoes from last year's harvest that I have stored in my basement, which is in a cool, dry place. And if you um, grow sweet potatoes and you cure them properly, they will store for many, many months. So I actually picked up some more sweet potatoes today from the farm, though, too. So what you need for this recipe? Um, of course, I pointed out the greens, and then we have some um, olive oil and red wine vinegar. I'm just going to toss my lettuce greens in that. Nothing special. If you have a, a good Italian dressing, you can use that too. Um, some sea salt, some butter, some lemon, some sugar, and some honey, and then some high temperature cooking oil, which I'm going to go ahead and put in my pan here. Just about um, a tablespoon. I forgot to mention, so I'm already baked my sweet potatoes. You can throw this together in just a matter of minutes if you have already baked your sweet potato, which is what I have done. And it is, um, it was in the refrigerator, so I just took it out. I popped it in my toaster oven, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to warm it up first for this recipe. So that's what kind of, that's what makes this um, dish nice is that you can bake your sweet potato ahead of time. And I bake mine for about an hour on 400, depending on the, um, the width the, or how thick the sweet potato is. You know if they're narrow and skinny, they tend to be a little more stringy. So the ones that are a little more blocky and fat are, I think, better. So keep that in mind if when, uh, when you're buying your sweet potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and just break uh, my sausage apart. And I'm going to remove it from the casing. I'm just breaking them in half. And then you just want to shape them into small uh, little like, sausages. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fry these in the little pan here. I want to get them nice and crispy on the outside. So this is a hot Italian sausage. You can use um, maybe another kind of sausage, like a chorizo sausage would be good. And then instead of using the anise pizza, you might want to use like cilantro or something like that. So now while these are crisping up, I am going to go ahead and get my greens ready. Now, like I said earlier, I'm using a mustard green. Mustard has a pretty strong flavor, um, but you can use whatever you have growing in your garden. Um, I think spinach would be delightful. Cabbage leaves would be really good, too. Um, but with my mustard green, it has a very um, tough rib in the middle of it, so I need to cut that out. And I would suggest that, depending on which green you're using, you may want to cut yours out, too. I'm just going to slice it down the side here. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half. And remove this. And it's going to go into my composter. I will include a link to what I use to compost my food scraps. Um, I have not done a review on it, but I did briefly touch on it in one video a couple of years ago. So you are welcome to take a look at that. Give these a little turn here. I want them nice and crispy on the outside. So the mustard, I'll show you. It's a beautiful color. Just so pretty. This is a red giant mustard. The reason why I like to take these out of the casing is so I can shape them to the size of the green leaf that I'm going to use. Okay, so these have reached a beautiful color. Hopefully you can see that there. And I am going to put these back in the toaster oven so that they can stay warm while I get the rest of it ready. Now I need to discard the drippings from the sausage. Now I'm just going to wipe this clean and dry and get out all of the drippings and anything that's left behind. We're going to boil up a little water. Now I have some ice water here. And so all I'm going to do is just soften up the... Um, leaves just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do my garlic chives and when I harvested them they're in one long bunch here so we're just going to go ahead and go in here and soften them up good and I'll place them in the ice water. I'm going to warm mine up a little bit because it's kind of veiny and I'm hoping that I'll change the color of this a little bit and bring out some of those highlights of the purple and the green. Okay, it's nice and soft now. I'm gonna put it in my water. Just 
repeat all of these like that. Okay, those can stay there while I get the sweet potatoes ready. I'm going to go ahead and dump out the water. I'm going to turn down the heat, and I'm going to make a little sauce to go on the sweet potatoes. So I'm only cooking one large sweet potato, so I'm adding about two tablespoons of butter. Okay, so now I want to add about one tablespoon of honey. I'm going to hit it with some salt and a little bit of sugar. I usually use brown sugar to sweeten my sweet potatoes, but I was just kind of scared that it might take away some of the color of the sweet potato, and I wanted it to be bright orange with these beautiful color, these mustard greens. So that's why I'm using honey and uh, just a regular sugar, okay? And we'll put a little squirt of some lemon juice in here. Okay, so now we're going to get our sweet potatoes. Now, the way I like to peel sweet potatoes is I like to take off the ends. This is just how I do it. <laughs> and then I cut down the skin. And then I peel off the outside. And so I'm just going to peel off the outside layer of the uh, sweet potato. And my little sauce here is coming to a nice little sizzle. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to pour about half of my sauce on my sweet potato. I'm just going to mash it up. Beautiful, bright orange. Okay, so I'll turn my heat back on very low. And I'm going to transfer my um, sweet potatoes to my skillet. Now you do not have to have your sweet potatoes warming in an oven before you do this. You can take them from the refrigerator and make this dish. So all I'm doing here is I'm uh, mashing out my little sweet potatoes onto my skillet and I want to let the bottom of the sweet potatoes brown. And they're going to form a real nice like, almost like a caramel. It's going to be kind of crispy and then I want the top to stay soft. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover these. while I get the greens and the sausage ready. Okay, so I'm gonna dry off my cabbage pieces and my garlic chives. We're gonna dry these pretty good with a paper towel. Now with my garlic chives, I wanna remove any outside discolored leaves and discard those, put that in my composter. I'm gonna go ahead and get my sausage out of the oven here and we're gonna wrap them up in the greens. So this mustard has a pretty color on one side and then it's the plain light green on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it um, inside the leaf so that the purple hue is on the outside. Starting with the small end of the leaf and I'm just rolling it along the line that I cut and so it sticks out nice and pretty like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn up my sweet potatoes a little bit. I really want to get those cooking. Well, I tie up my um, sausages here with the garlic chive. You can use a garlic leaf also, would be pretty. But it is important to blanch these first so that they're a little soft and you can work with them easier. And it also makes the color a little bit brighter. So I can't, these aren't quite long enough for me to get a bow out of, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them. So that at a little angle. Okay, so when you tie them, um, try not to get much of the white part in there because that's much tougher than the leaf part. So try to tie uh, so that not much of the white is in there. Okay, I'm going to trim off the little part here at an angle. Make it pretty. Let me check on my sweet potatoes here and see how they're looking. I'm just going to push some of the sauce in around the edges. And I'm going to uh, uncover it. This is going to help it crisp up if we uncover it. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and remove these from the skillet.
and it's nice and brown on the bottom. And then pour a little bit of the sauce right on the sweet potatoes, a little of the butter sauce there. Okay, and I'm going to just tear these grains a little bit, drizzle them with a little bit of red wine vinegar and a little bit of olive oil. Give them a quick toss. Okay, that can go right over here. Now I'm going to take some of the uh, anise hyssop leaves and just take our little anise hyssop leaf and go in here and give it a little bit of a shape there. A little heart. Round off the edges just to make it pretty. <laughs> okay. And I'll also take some of the anise hyssop leaves and I'm going to put just a couple cuttings on the sweet potatoes. And then the little leaves there and there we go. It is going to be wonderful. Yummy. Okay, so now let's give it a try. The thing about this dish is you have got to make sure you put the sweet potatoes in there. I think it makes everything so much better to have um, a little sweet potato with the hot sausage and the mustard. The mustard uh, really needs the sweet potato. Mmm. And the bottom's a little bit crunchy. May have gotten a little more done than I prefer. Um, so don't walk away from your <laughs> burner to check on your camera when you're when you're cooking this. And pick up a little bit of this anise hyssop leaf. Put it right in there. Mmm. So good.